Welcome back to Web Cafe AI. We do daily chat GPT and AI videos for your personal and business life. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the app of Google Forms and seeing how AI and Zapier can integrate with this. Here at Web Cafe AI, we are building out a playlist that shows you how to integrate AI with all 5,000 apps on Zapier. So, so make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for this. But for today's video, we're going to be looking at specifically the app of Google Forms and one use case that we can use AI and see how we can leverage that. Let's come over here and rename this to Google Forms Integration. And then as always, we're gonna go ahead and create a trigger here. And lucky for us, we can actually use the trigger of Google Forms. So we'll be able to dive right into it for us. And then as always, you can find the zap in this video in the description below. Let's go ahead and begin. To start off, let's go ahead and create an event and we're gonna say new form response. We're gonna go ahead and continue here. We're gonna choose our account. So in this context, we're gonna go ahead and use our courses account. We're gonna go ahead and hit continue again. And then the form, we got a pseudo form here for lawn services. We go ahead and hit continue here and then let's go ahead and test this trigger. Perfect, so as you see here, we got a pseudo response, which is gonna be essentially the different input that was requested in that survey. So let me go ahead and real quickly show you what this form looks like. All right, so we went ahead and made a very general lead form here, which shows the lawn services asking for a name, an address, an email, services requested, and then property size. We're gonna be able to take all these variables and then make a really cool email using AI. All right, so from here, we're gonna go ahead and create our chat GPT block. So we're gonna go ahead and do chat GPT. And then we do conversation, continue, continue. And then let's go ahead and create our first prompt in this flow. So essentially, as you see here, we are given a ton of data here. We're given uh, basically everything associated with the underlying form here. What's important to us though, is probably the answers to the form. So if you see here, we got the answers of an email. We got square footage of the property. We got the name, the services requested, and then the address. So we're gonna go ahead and use all this information and draft an AI email that could be a potential follow-up to this lead. Therefore, let's go ahead and begin. Let's go ahead and add a context block here. We're gonna say context. We are a lawn mowing company called Lawns and Trees Co. We just received an, a cold lead from one of our forms. So the next thing is, okay, so you really, we have context here. We received a cold lead from one of our forms. We know exactly who we are as an individual. Let's go ahead and just say client lead, semicolon, and then let's go ahead and input some information here. So we're gonna go ahead and say name. We're gonna go ahead and say services requested. And then we will say property size, semicolon. And then we'll go ahead and do parentheses in order to make sure our data doesn't overflow. And then as you see here, we'll go ahead and grab name. And I wanna point out one thing, as you see here, you might be saying to yourself, why are you putting name here if it's already identified there? The way that Zapier will interpret this and specifically Zapier using OpenAI will be essentially just Tim Adam Adams. It won't have the context of name with the underlying variable. So from here, we're gonna do services requested. And then finally, we're gonna do our property size, which is gonna be square feet. So I need to make sure I actually add that. So let's go ahead and add square feet from here. Let's go ahead and do a couple of things. We're gonna go ahead and say generate a, a email subject and email body. We're gonna start off very simple here and then we're gonna up our model to GPT-4 and we're gonna go ahead and output this. Let's see if we need to restructure the underlying prompt a little based off the output. On top of that, let's add a memory key here. So we're gonna do lawn EM and essentially a memory key here, think of it as a way so that GBT, every time it formats an output, it is consistent and we don't get any variability. So that maybe like you send out 10 emails, eight of them look great, two of them don't look great. That's because you don't have a memory key. Okay, so we got a pretty big output here, but let's go ahead and mess around with it a little bit. I wanna show you some tricks here. I'm gonna use this as our you know, data that we're dealing with here. Let's just say we're satisfied of this and we didn't give any more further context. Maybe we wanna give more further context of underlying information about the business. We could add that here, but for now, this is sufficient enough. Let's go ahead and format this data and structure it and then put it into an email that could possibly be set up as a draft. All right, so from here, I'm gonna go ahead and create a formatted block. And the purpose of creating the formatted block is essentially we're going to separate the subject line and the body line from the from each other. So we can use it as two separate uh, data points. 
you might be asking yourself, okay, well, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just build out two separate chat GBT blocks? I'm doing that for the purpose of showing you better efficiency when it comes to AI usage. We're going to go ahead and say the separator for the data is going to be new line. Essentially, that is a way for Zapier to understand every time there's a new line, separate it into a different data point. And then we're going to use a segment index of all but separate fields in order to ensure that essentially what I'm trying to grab here is that line of code or text. And as you see here, we were officially successful at grabbing that line. There we go. And from here, we're going to be able to use that later on. So let's go to our next phase here, which essentially is going to be setting up our email. So we're going to go ahead and do email. Um, or for me, I like to use Gmail. So we're going to do Gmail. We're going to do an event. We're going to say create draft. Obviously, if we want to get a little bit more complex here, I could set this up so it automatically sends out at a delay. That would require a lot more prompt structuring. That would require a little bit more complexity on the underlying flow. So for now, we're just going to have a little bit of more of a manual process here. We're going to go ahead and choose our account of courses and then continue. And then we're going to send the subject first. So the subject would be essentially this subject right here. And I want to show you a real quick trick as well. So you might be saying to yourself, well, you know, that's great. You built the, the separation, but now subjects in the subject line of the email, that's not going to look good to a client. What we can do here is we can do format again. And with formatting again, we can go ahead and say, text and then we can do a different type of action here and the underlying action that we're going to choose here is going to be replace and essentially all we need to do is take that formatted piece of data which is going to be the subject here and then we're going to find subject semicolon space if i can spell subject right and we're going to replace it with nothing and then therefore by replacing of nothing we just get the subject line that we care about which is going to be mon and trees co customized lawn care services for beautiful 10k square foot property we could obviously add more preference there, but as you see here, if we went ahead and input the correct variable here, which is going to be this one without that nasty little subject, we got the subject line we're going to use in our email. So we have the subject line for the two. We're going to add our courses account. Actually, not our courses account. We're going to add to the customer that reached out to us. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and just go email from the original form. And then from here, we can keep on going down. We can add a CC, BCC, a from, a from name. So from names, like what a show up when it comes into the email. So for the body, what we can do is we can go ahead and set up a, uh, go to the original conversation. We can put the assistant response message, set up the body there. Because we're dealing with a draft here, we're gonna be able to manipulate the underlying text there a little bit more. You can add an attachment, a label, if you have a label for your Gmail, a signature, if you have a signature for your Gmail. From here, that is all we need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and test this action and let's go ahead and see what it would look like in draft. Perfect. So as you see above me, we have the subject line automatically input into the draft without the you know subject semicolon that was the original output of the chat GPT data. From here, we can go ahead and click into it. And as you know, since it's a draft, we can go ahead and delete that and go ahead and move this up here. And then uh, as we've seen in the original output, we may have to put in some variables here. Obviously, I could have structured the prompt better and said, hey, this is my name. This is my title. This is my email address. This is my phone number. Then we could have structured a more, gave more context on the underlying business and how we operate. Typically, when for outputs, train the GBT to understand the type of outputs we've had in the past that were successful and so on. But the purposes of this tutorial was to show you a real simple way you can integrate Google Forms with Zapier and AI. If you feel like you learned something, make sure to like the video. It's completely free and it helps us here at Web Cafe AI. If you're interested in learning more about how to leverage AI of Zapier, check out the playlist at the end of this video as we are tackling all 5,000 apps on Zapier and showing every single way that AI can be integrated with these apps, really letting you leverage the new power that we've found within the last couple of months when it comes to AI and Zapier. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Web Cafe, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.